welcome to my channel. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe so I can get more people knowing about my channel. Today we are back with another in-depth book discussion of Storm Siren by Mary Weber. This book has all of the essential elements of YA. We got a strong female lead who is the chosen one. Uh, she's the only girl elemental. The romance that she shares with Eogon, which is actually beautifully written and not cheesy. And the chance to save the world. It focused on Nim, who has a, who has been a slave all of her life and who can summon storms. I wonder why all of these girls with these abilities seem to have silver white hair. Of course, we have our main character, Nim, in this story. Then we have Daenerys Stormborn Targaryen, her iconic blonde silver hair, who made it rain dragon fire with just one word, Dracarys. And she was born on Dragonstone and the storm raged for for months and it was so powerful that it smashed her father's fleet uh, into the sea. Then we have the beautiful Storm from X-Men who does a lot of her trademark work with lightning whenever she is working with, uh, with controlling the weather and summoning storms. So I definitely see that this silver white hair is quite a theme in this type of power. I wonder why that is. I did really enjoy this book as well. The book begs some really important questions such as guilt and uh, making up for your sins and it reads much very so much like a movie uh, I could really see everything drawn out theatrically as I was reading the book and the book has some really interesting language like I I just couldn't get used to old holes what have I done and Nim, she says, what the bull crane a lot, and which was kind of confusing because we didn't really figure out what bull cranes were until kind of midway through the book. So that took some getting used to. And the bond within the characters is, is really nice. Breck and his sister's Colin relationship and the romance between Iwagon and Nim and even some of the flirting that goes on between Colin and Nim uh, I thought was really well written and you know you can always feel when people like, care about you and I really like on page 241 when it says after that I only glance back at Colin and Breck once and it's because his gaze won't leave me alone I can feel it what does he want when I look, the concern I find written there is caring. It's authentic. It's the same expression I've seen a hundred times on Eogon. Eogon's and Nim's relationship really reminds me a lot of Yoda and Luke's uh, Jedi training. Uh, especially there's a scene in page 190, one, or 197 where where she she really starts to believe in her power and see how the beauty in it and it says that that right there is why you can't fully control your ability because you're afraid to believe better about yourself and and then you know she gives a bunch of excuses of how she's gonna hurt people and that reminds me of the scene where uh, Yoda and Luke are training the Empire Strikes Back and Yoda lifts that little tiny spaceship out of the the pond that they're in and Luke is like oh I, I can't believe it and Yoda is like and that is why you fail because you don't believe you gotta believe the main principles that Nim struggles with is feeling like she's a monster instead of recognizing her true worth and all of the powers she really does hold and it's something that everybody kind of utilizes over her and you could see it uh, on page 29 when she says 
Of course, you can make up for the atrocities you've done. You'll have to live with the guilty of horror for the rest of your life, but what, what if there's a way that you could actually live with yourself by spending your life making up for it? And this is a conversation that she's having with Adora and trying to convince her, well, you're going to be a weapon, the greatest weapon that we have in, in Falun's kingdom to overcome this, this war. And... It talks about her just feeling like cringing at the word weapon. She even says it's synonymous with death. So because at the very beginning of the book when Nim's powers are so directly linked to her emotions, she's killed a lot of people. So it starts with uh, that little red-headed girl at the auction at the beginning of the book. And up until a certain part of the book, she believes that she's killed her mom and dad. And later she finds out that Eagon uh, did it. And she also killed the sons of Owner 9 while drinking. So she really thinks of herself as a curse. So when she starts to realize the beauty of her power, everything really does get a lot easier for Nim and she stops trying to fight it so much. So on page one on page two oh one, when she says I brace for it, but instead of my power exploding like a thunderstorm, it comes as a gentle tide, a heart surrender almost painful in its approach, beckoning tears to my eyes as it renders my defenses non-existent. And suddenly, I can't remember why I ever needed them anyway, because the very power I've spent my life cowering from is at its core pure. So another key moment from the book where Nim really helps get her confidence is on right on page 220 when she's having the conversation with Princess Rasha. And she says to her, you hold the key to your own cage. The spirit in you isn't broken, just unbelieving. But in order to fly, you hold the key to your own pay, to your own cage. I do enjoy that her powers are so directly linked to her emotions and how she's feeling inside. Right at the beginning of page 120, she says, I'm almost finished after half an hour of him telling me to steady my breathing and the center of the storm inside of me in order to calm the one above. And that's true, you know, you got to calm the storm inside before you can really do anything else. With the theme of emotions, I also uh, really enjoyed learning about Eogon's past and learning about how on page 237, when his father had asked Il Isabel to change him and his twin brother Odeon, um and to harden up their emotions, and it was to the point where... Eogon didn't really feel anything but a desire for her and he wasn't trying to fight for the throne since he was the firstborn. So it, another really big, you know, play on emotions and how it impacts a person. Parts that I actually really enjoyed reading, reading the most of this book was the part where they're all in the clearing and Eogon tests them by having these pack of wolves come out just after they have escaped the bull cranes and he's trying to see how far Nim is gonna go and you know if she's gonna kill and and not have to and, and when she, well after Nim has killed the wolves especially after seeing the damage that she's done through the alpha wolf I really like that she's not just kindling because she likes it and that she actually has a heart and that she, you know, has a soul. And um, right on page 172 where it says Eogon is talking about why he, he had her do this little test. He says, I tested you because this isn't a game and like it or not, killing is one aspect of war. If you can't kill an animal, Nim, how do you expect to defend Falun when lives are at stake? Because you will be killing people. And she doesn't want to decide who lives and 
who dies and she doesn't want to, that even to have that weight put on her shoulders and have that put on herself and and since Nim's been a slave all her life and been at the very bottom of the to- the totem pole, I really feel like that's had a big impact on her self-esteem. And there's several parts of the book where, you know, she's caught cutting herself and um, putting marks on her arm near where those circles that show that she was a slave. And she says on page 173, you're also disillusioned. You'll have us fight for the sake of killing. And for what? To protect an upper class who kills elemental babies and enslaves children and sells out their king to the highest bidder? You want me to protect people who cut each other's throats? And that is that is really true, you know. She's really wondering, why should I protect people who haven't protected her you know all her life or really since her parents have died ethics being discussed on page 193 it says what happened is I trained them too well to the point they outgrew their consciousness they became assassins killing when it was faster rather than finding a better way you heard me say the other day that killing is a part of war but it's not the only part it should always be a last resort and that's on page 193 when Nim is again she's she is a character that has a lot of self-pity but with after everything that she has been through it is completely understandable and he's you know trying to persuade her to believe in herself and view her powers as a gift rather than a curse and he tells her well you do have control because you didn't kill the entire wolf pack and um and that's one thing like, I, I do really like this character. On the theme of morality, um, she she has this conversation a lot with characters in the book, especially with Colin, um, when they're when she's asking him about um, you know, destiny and do you believe that we're supposed to believe deliverance to Fallen and Colin goes at the top page 272 I think some have to fight harder to choose good or evil because the evil's got it out for them and maybe it's because those are the ones evil knows will become the strongest warriors recognizing true wickedness when it rears its head growth throughout the story is nice to see as well I remember at the very beginning of the book when she could barely stand up to a door and say what she's thinking to right at the very uh, page on 283 when she's having a conversation with the king and she goes even if we could you're asking an elemental girl or elemental slave to rescue the people whose laws would see her dead your majesty and and she's and she really stands up for her and says I if you need to fight for all your people or else you're not gonna like what you're gonna receive from me so she's really standing up for what she believes in very sad at the end when Colin died I wasn't expecting him to die so soon and that he really wanted her to you know continuing to you know have the legacy and protecting the people and to give the slaves and the lower people a better a better life and ending is exactly like a movie she thinks she's got her beloved Eogon but really uh, the Dre wolf has taken his form and we're sucked in for the very next sequel trying to figure out uh, what is going um, what is going to happen with Eogon in the next one but overall a really nice enjoyable read uh, let me guys, let me know what you guys thought in the comments um, thank you for watching.